How's it going guys? Andrew is American Diesel. So behind me we have a uh, 2020 Chevy Silverado. It was involved in a front end collision. And so this is gonna be our guinea pig for today. And uh, the reason why I'm making this video is because a couple months ago I got burned. And the reason why I got burned was because of this right here. So I got a measurement of 124 ohms across six and 14, okay? So if you've done resistance measurements, on the cat networks you would think that's as bad okay and that's not the case on this one so yeah let's go over this and uh let's have some fun with it <laughs> all right so as i was stating earlier i'm on pin 6 and 14 okay and then we have this resistance measurement. So with this being a 2020, this already has the new implemented serial data gateway. Okay. So now let's go to a 2019 previous to that gateway. And uh, basically, so this one is in series. The resistance that I'm measuring right now on six and 14, this is a, a in series measurement. Okay. So now I'm going to cut to the other vehicle that I have over there. Uh, I was actually working on that one as well. So that one right there, it's measured in parallel. So yeah, let's jump to the other truck and let's take a resistance measurement of that one as well. All right, guys. So now we're in the uh, 2019 Chevy Serato. Same measurement on the DLC. Okay. 6 and 14. Look what we got here. 60 ohms. Why is that? Because this one's in parallel. So let's go over here to the board and let's explain why they're different and why this one is good and the other one's good as well. So yeah, let's cut to the board. All right, and so now we're at the uh, board of knowledge over here. <clears throat> Stolen from Erico, of course. <laughs> so right here, we have our formula for resistors in series. <clears throat> okay, so on the 2020 Chevy Silverado, it's gonna be in series. So here's resistor number one, okay? And then here's resistor number two, okay? So this is gonna label it R1. This one we're gonna label it R2. Sorry if my numbers and everything look like hieroglyphs. I promise you it's not, it's in English. So resistance one, <clears throat> it's gonna be 60 ohms, okay? I really don't know how to draw ohms, so we'll just do like that. 60 as well. And then ohms. Okay, so where we're measuring it, we're measuring it here and here. So pretend that this is our DVOM. Okay. Here's our DVOM. Here's our ports. Okay. So we have that. And then our measurement is 120. Okay. The reason being is because all you're doing is adding. So come to the formula, R1 plus R2 equals the total amount. So 60 plus 60, add them together, you get 120. Easy, right? So that's how you measure in series. So in parallel, it's different. You have one here, one here, it's parallel. So we're gonna put our resistors here, one at each end. And then here we're gonna put 120. And over here as well, we're gonna do 120. Okay, so we got both our resistors over here, 120, 120. And then so over here and here, do the same thing too. We're gonna go to our DVOM. Okay, let's draw DVOM here. Now I'm really not great at jarring. Okay, and then the same thing here, we're gonna get the resistance measurement of 60. Okay, the reason being is because this being in parallel, we're measuring it here and here at the, uh, let's, so let's draw like a, this is our DLC, so be here, pin six and pin 14. So that's where we're measuring at. We're measuring it here 
on pin six and pin 14 on the DLC. So that's how we get our measurement, okay? So if you use the formula, so this one's a little bit more complicated. This is gonna be R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So let's just do the math. So we have 120 ohm resistor times 120 ohms. So R1 and R2, okay? Then we're gonna divide it by 120 plus 120. So R1 and R2, okay? And this is gonna give us the total. So we come over here, 120 times 120 equals 14,400, okay? Then we're gonna get this measurement over here, 120 plus 120. What's that? 240. Okay, so then all we have to do is divide this number by that number. What does that give us? It gives us 60 ohms. So that's how you calculate resistance in parallel and also in series. All right, so if you're anything like me, I'm a very visual person. So rather than uh, showing diagrams and, um, and kind of talking about it, so let's just actually do an experiment. So right here, I have a uh, two ohm resistor. I don't know if you can't really see that, but that's two ohms right here. And this one right here is six ohms. So let's prove that. Let's go here, jump that across. Let's get that one. So we have a reading of 2.3, 2.4. Kind of climbing up there a little bit. But yeah, basically two ohms. Okay, come over here, get a six ohm resistor. Okay, get that connected. And then right here we have 6.6, 6. 6.5. Okay, so let's show a in series measurement. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie these two together Okay, I'm just gonna twist them together. I don't wanna make this permanent because I gotta do another test. So I might get it across here. Okay, got that one. And then I got this one. So back where we're saying in series, all we have to do is add six plus two. So we get eight ohms, okay? So now let's do a parallel measurement. So we're gonna do, we're gonna leave these two tied together. Okay. And then we're gonna tie these two together. Okay. Clamp that one. We're gonna clamp this one. There you go. So even though we combined two resistors, a two ohm and a six ohm resistor, our measurement actually went down. Why is that? So if you come over here to the board, the reason being is because we're doing R1, R2, R1, R2, and divided by that. So I guess let's, uh, let's do the math and let's see if the, the math actually reads the same as the, uh, as the meter. All right guys, so let's do the math, okay? So that way we can see if we're somewhat close whenever it comes to using the formula of parallel and using this. So R1 times R2, which is the first one was at 2.3, okay? Second one, I wanna say it was 6.2, okay? Then, it's gonna be R1 again, so 2.3, and then plus 6.2. So if we multiply 2.3 times 6.2, that's gonna come out to 14.26, okay? And then 2.3 plus 6.2 is 8.5. So then all we gotta do now is divide that. 
and that will equal our resistance. So if you do the math, that's gonna come out to 1.67. Okay, so basically 1.7. And as you can see, just me uh, letting this simmer, I think it was starting at 1.8. So yeah, we're very close to what the measurement should be on the formula. So using this formula right here uh, can get you can get you to where you need to be. So if you're trying to figure out between one, two resistors in parallel, or if you're trying to do it in series, you can do either which way. So yeah. Let's, uh, let's move on to something else. All right, guys, so let's go over this uh, the wiring diagram. So right now I have pulled up the 2020 version uh, of the CAN network. So as you can see here, we have 120 ohms and 120 ohms, okay? So the reason why we're getting 120 ohms on the reading is because the DLC is not tied into the GM LAN high speed. So we see here pin six, pin 14. Okay, so I'm pretty much measuring the serial data gateway module. And it has an internal resistance of 120. So as we were stating earlier, if you want to get a reading or if you look at the formula of R1 plus R2 equals 120. So with me getting a resistance reading of 120, they're basically telling me that everything's fine. Everything's dandy. There's nothing wrong with it. And uh, with me coming over here to the 2019 model and me seeing a 120 ohm resistor, 120 ohm resistor, right here, this is a parallel system. Uh, so they both are a parallel system as far as the GM, GM LAN high speed. The only difference is the DLC is connected on the 2019s and previous and the 2020 the 2020s and up are not tied into with the DLC so if you see pin 6 and pin 14 we're tied into here tied into here so right there we're checking in parallel across 6 and 14 and of course like we were saying 120 and 120 on resistors uh, resistor uh, measurement across those two that equals 60 and like we were saying earlier, so you take the 120 and 120, multiply them, you get 14,400. And then you get 120 and 120, add those both up. Then you get the resistance measurement you got first was 14,400 divided by 240. Then that's how we get 60 ohms across six and 14. Okay, so and then so let's kind of go back to where i was before <clears throat> and this is the mistake that i had made so since i was over here at the brake system control module so i undid this here and this one had an issue with um communication with the brake system control module which was uh, k160 so i'll go to the scan tool read the codes and there was a bunch of error codes, like, like ROM codes, stuff like that. Can't remember exactly what the DTC was. But uh, so I checked powers, checked grounds to the module. All that was fine. And then my last step was, was checking the data uh, communication. So I checked the packets, packet looks fine. Uh, check on my scope. Uh, I don't have that with me. Um, so I then checked pin 42 and 26, and I got a reading of 120. So I'm like, okay, so the break is not there. So then I checked across pin 41 and 25, and the same thing, I got 120. So then I wanted to check to see if I could bypass uh, the K160 module, which is the brake system control module. I then bypassed 41 and 42, got those together. And then I got 25 and 26, bypassed those together. That way I can get the total resistance on pin six and 14. So whenever I did that, bypassed them both, I still got a reading of 120. When I got that reading, I dang near lost my mind. I was like, there is absolutely no way I should be getting a reading of 120. But if we come back over here to the DLC, this DLC does not tie 
into the GM, GM land high speed. It doesn't tie into it. The only thing it ties into is the serial data gateway module. So let's come back over here because I didn't check that. Let's see. Let's see if this system, okay, so it does have that serial data gateway module. And um, at this point in 2019, it was, it was a player as far as communication, but you still had pin six and 14 to measure across because it was going through it in parallel. And then coming across this system, it's not. So each one of these wires um, that's going through as far as the pin, these pins are just going to the gateway module and that's it. The buck stops there. So whenever I went to another vehicle, checked the readings there, and that's when I saw that I was getting 120 there uh, on a 21 mo uh, model. <clears throat> uh, it was a 2021 Chevy Serato, and uh, the only difference was it was just a, a year newer. So then that's when it hit me that I need to be checking these wiring diagrams and I bet you anything there's somewhere on there that's going to show me that that's the correct reading then that's when I went through the motion checking all this just like I'm going with you and that's when I seen oh my god why didn't I why didn't I look at this why was I complacent why because I've seen so many systems that were 60 ohms it's good and then whenever I get a reading of 120 meaning it's bad because like I said over here 120 120 if you're only reading one it should be 120 because <clears throat> if there's a break in the wire here and if i'm checking it here and if i'm only reading one that means that there's a break in the wire and that's the rabbit hole that i was chasing was basically that there's an open circuit and then with me coming over here to the um well on this one it's the ebcm <clears throat> but when i was reading it here on the brake system control module bypassed them both and i just <laughs> about blew a gasket and but yeah it's just really a teaching moment rather rather than uh, me wasting my time um this just pretty much shows me that it's an ongoing learning battle every single day that you go out there and you try to diagnose something, you're always constantly learning. And I will never say that I know everything. I will always humble myself because this vehicle right here humbled me. And just when you think you're just about to, you know, become, you know, super proficient in something, you know, GM or somebody else, because as far as I know, GM ain't the only one that uses this, this kind of system. So I got that measurement, threw me off, and pretty much humbled me. And now I know for the future of what I should be doing. So next time, if you do come across this, and this would be the correct thing to do, is you need to go to this gateway module and do your readings there versus checking over here on six and 14, like all the way we used to. So I've diagnosed everything from, you know, a Kubota tractor, um, a cat skid steers, Kubota skid steers, uh, trucks, cars, you know, you name it. Pretty much everybody has followed that same system like it used to be. And so, yeah, like I'm saying, you know, you get these readings, it threw me off and pretty much it was just a learning lesson. So. Alrighty guys, I appreciate you, appreciate you learning with me. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see y'all guys on the next one.